The most important finding of this study with people who had severe mitral regurgitation or a leaky mitral valve was that even in the absence of symptoms, even in people who feel perfectly fine, there are frequently changes in the heart. And these changes in the heart precede real heart damage. So the key finding, even if you feel fine, if you have severe mitral regurgitation, you need to get a very careful physical exam and echo exam to make sure that your heart is not changing in bad ways. The primary limitation of this study looking at the relationship between a leaking mitral valve and New York Heart Association functional class is that we compared people and their functional classes when they came for surgery, which is different from following the same person over time and seeing how the same person has changes in his or her heart as he or she develops symptoms. There is one study in Europe that has done that, but in general, that's very difficult to do these days. I think the takeaway message is very clear. The message is, if people have severe mitral regurgitation, you need to look at their hearts carefully with echo and make sure they don't have heart damage. And the corollary to that is early surgery, early surgery in people with severe mitral regurgitation who are likely to have their valves repaired. I think the biggest challenge in scheduling surgery for a patient who has no symptoms but a severe leak is in getting both the patient and his or her doctor to realize that surgery is indicated. The fact is, if your mitral valve is severely broken, it is only going to get worse, it is only going to damage your heart, and it's not going to fix itself. So if you have severe mitral regurgitation, surgical correction is inevitable. And I think that's the key message to get across. Organic MR, or organic mitral regurgitation, means there's something wrong with the valve. The valve leaflets, the valve cords are broken or dysfunctional. Functional mitral regurgitation, on the other hand, means that there's a problem with the left ventricle. The valve is attached to the left ventricle. If the ventricle doesn't work well or dilates, meaning it increases in size, it can stretch out the valve and cause it to leak. These are two very different groups of people. If you have organic mitral regurgitation, your valve is broken, but usually your heart is okay. And repairing that valve results in a very durable, low-risk procedure. On the other hand, people with functional MR have a diseased heart muscle. The surgery to repair the valve is higher risk, and even with their valves repaired, they still have a damaged or diseased heart muscle. So in essence, if you have functional MR, you don't get as much out of the surgery. The idea that the heart-lung machine causes problems with your thinking or cognitive deficits has been around for a long time. In fact, in people with mitral valve disease, it is very unusual for people to get real neurocognitive pro yeah. Can I do that one again? Yeah, sorry, what, do you, what, what about the risk of post-perfusion syndrome? The idea that people get post-perfusion syndrome, in particular cognitive problems after heart surgery, has been around a long time. In fact, when you're operating on somebody who has mitral valve issues, the incidence of this sort of post-perfusion problem is very, very, very low. So what I would tell the average person who's having mitral valve surgery is that we expect you to do fine. You're having an extremely low risk operation, post-perfusion syndrome, cognitive problems after surgery, very unusual. And the surgery is going to return you to a normal, normal life and give you a normal life expectancy. When we do heart surgery, in the operating room is somebody called a perfusionist. And the perfusionist is the person who runs the heart-lung machine. What that means is that during heart surgery, during the actual time of working on the heart valve, your heart is stopped and your lungs are stopped. The heart-lung machine takes over their functions and we call the part of it that deals with the circulation perfusion or extracorporeal perfusion, artificial perfusion. And it has been suggested that having your blood pumped by a machine instead of by your own heart can result in problems that are called the post-perfusion syndrome. Today, the heart-lung machine is safer than it's ever been, and these sorts of issues, the post-perfusion syndrome, very rare.